Hello, and welcome to the Chicago Kent Legal Clinics webinar. I'm Nicole Vilches, Assistant Dean for Admissions, and I'll be your moderator for the webinar today. I'm joined by Professors Jonathan Decatur Smith and Heather Harper, as well as June Cho and Stephanie Ferrari, who are both current Chicago Kent students. To begin today's presentation, I'm going to provide you with a high level overview of Chicago Kent's legal clinic. I will then turn the floor over to our panelists for introductions and let them discuss the clinic in greater detail. After that, we'll use any remaining time for your questions. So to begin, uh, the, Sh the Chicago Kent Law Group, the Law Offices of Chicago Kent, has been a pioneer in clinical le legal education since the early 1980s. It's also one of the nation's largest legal clinics with 18 full-time in-house practicing attorneys, as well as four adjunct attorneys. These attorneys rank at the top of their fields in criminal defense, tax, employment law, civil litigation, and more. The CK Law Group is known for its unique law firm model of clinical education based on its fee generating structure and the success of the program is due to the unique benefits that flow to Chicago Kent students. Our students have the opportunity to gain real world experience at a private law firm by working on sophisticated litigation and transactional matters with highly experienced clinical professors who are also among the most successful and noted attorneys within their fields. The programs are open to second and uh, third year students, but first year full-time students can participate in an innovative clinical rotation during the spring semester of the full -time first year where they get a chance to rotate through three different practice areas. And our clinical education program accommodates more than 150 students in the fall and spring semesters and more than 50 students in the summer semester. So with that, I'd like to turn the floor over to our panelists. We'll start out with uh, introductions and then move into the presentation. So if you'd like to each introduce yourselves, that'd be great. We'll start with Professor Harper. Hello, thanks for joining us. My name is Heather Harper and I run the Entrepreneurship Clinic. My practice, well, first of all, I have two Chicago Clinic graduates working with me as staff attorneys, so we're a pretty big practice. I represent startups and small businesses. Uh, what we do is form companies and do a lot of operational, just new business work. We do financing work and a lot of work we do is fractional general counsel work. So for instance, uh, one student yesterday answered a client question about advertising. We took a look at all of their advertising material and then vetted it to see if it was substantiated enough to go out. Another student this morning uh, did a legal audit of a client's current business to figure out what legal needs were happening and or I guess what legal needs the client has so that we could follow up with work including things like liability waivers, contracts. So as soon as she's done presenting that to the client, she'll go into the drafting of that. And then I have lots of other students who are doing trademarks and other matters on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's a, an overview of, of my practice in clinic. Hi, um, thanks for having me uh, join you all today. Uh, my practice is essentially a tax controversy practice, which means we basically fight the IRS day in and day out. We also fight the state of Illinois, the state of Wisconsin, and other departments of revenue. Um, we do a lot of litigation, a lot of administrative practice that leads up to that litigation. Obviously, we don't try every case that we could. Um, it's normally in our clients' um, interest to um, settle those cases, and we strive to um, get some experience, though, for um, the clinical students in the courtroom. My students have um, had witnesses and motions in front of the tax court. We uh, now have three or four cases uh, pending in the district court. These are um, return prepare injunction cases, which are kind of quasi criminal cases. We also do some tax transactional work, um, although that is a smaller part of our practice. Um, we train in litigation skills primarily. Um, another part of our practice that's developed a little bit more over the last couple of years is probate and estate planning. And I would say 20, 25% of our clients um, are in those categories. Um, some of that obviously is litigation with the probate, and some of it is more on the planning end where we um, not only draft wills, but we do some more complicated estate planning as well, living trusts and asset protection devices and things like that. 
Um, I, like Professor Harper, could speak to you about our practice for um, a much longer time than is allotted. Um, so hopefully we'll have some questions if there's anything specific that you want to ask me. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm Stephanie Ferrari. I'm currently a 3L. I'm in my second semester in Professor Leader's Civil Litigation Clinic. Um, that clinic's nice because we get to do all different sorts of areas of law. Um, we do plaintiff and defense work. Uh, right now I'm working on answering some discovery and that entails doing um, a chart analysis. So that's what I'm up to right now. Hi, uh, my name is Jing Cho. Thank you for having me. I'm, uh, I worked at Professor Heather Harper's uh, entrepreneurial clinic when I was uh, two hours. So that was the first semester after I finished my first year course. And uh, as you might know, all the first year classes were very litigation focused. So when I first started the clinic, I was super excited because finally I got the chance to do uh, transactional work. And that was what I I'm super passionate about. So the entrepreneurial clinic was, as Professor Heather Harper mentioned, it could um, cover a lot of different areas, and um, such as employment law issues, um, corporate law issues, tax law issues, and um, IP law issues. And we got the chance to work on real work, real clients, and uh, get real experience. So that was a great experience for me. And can you talk a bit more about the fee generating model and kind of what that is and why it makes a difference in the benefits the students get from the clinic? I definitely can. And I, I was the champion of not calling it a fee-based model, but the law firm model, because I think that fee-based model seems weird. Uh, we're all law firm. So prior to uh, starting to you know, becoming a professor, I worked with law firms. And I was trained at Sidley and, and then I went to Hastings. And as such, like it's a very intense experience and you have to recognize that law is about working for clients and understanding the business of law early on really makes for law uh, makes for a more successful and enjoyable legal career in my opinion understanding so i mean i love the business of it and i immediately and always pull all my students into that like we like to talk about it in terms of what level of review does this warrant and is this sensible and because um, my clinic and my, my practice is oftentimes being the fractional general counsel to a lot of different companies, like I'm actually oftentimes hiring other lawyers on behalf of our clients. And you know, we're spending a lot of time even vetting them and figuring out what's the cost benefit with that. So I, uh, I love it. I think that the business part of it is really helpful. It also means that the speed with which you get to see things is real. So I have very good friends who do transactional clinics all around the country. If anyone's here, I love you guys. But they do a fraction of the work that we do. And the reason for that is because they're really just trying to take one or two discrete projects and then unfold it in a really um, interesting way. It's valuable. I'm not saying it's not. But it doesn't actually mimic practice at all. Uh, whereas my, my firm really looks like being a young associate at a large law firm. You know, it's an intense experience that is both fun and fulfilling. As I like to say, you can mess up there and I'm a little little rough, a little tough and a little gentle. And so um, it's meant to be intense and our volume of work allows for that. And you get to see much more sophisticated transactions. So I've had like, you know, was it two or three shark, shark tank deals? I don't, rem I don't remember it. Is three, <laughs> two, <clo> two did not actually close. How interesting is that? Um, we've had, you know, Series A financings. I've, I've issued legal opinions on the other side, and regularly on the other side of large law firms like Fenwick and Cooley. And so you just get a really sophisticated look at work that is exciting in, in a transactional area. So that's why um, I'm shocked how year after year uh, goes by, and there aren't any other, as far as I know, fee-based or law firm model clinical programs associated with law schools in the country. Um, uh, I have this sort of unique perspective in that when I joined the Chicago Kennedy faculty as a clinical professor, uh, I was um, funded by a grant, which made me more like every other law clinic across the country based on a public interest, not-for-profit model. And I liked it, and I loved serving low-income clients, which was um, sort of the parameters of our grant. Uh, but for the last seven years, I have joined my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, the rest of the clinics, 
uh, clinical programs in Chicago can, in which we charge for our services. Uh, we are uh, not ashamed of that. In fact, we're extraordinarily proud of that because of the learning opportunities that it provides to um, our students. Um, I was a champion of it even when I was under a grant. And what I have found is not only have I learned a lot about the business of law, um, and I've grown up and been able to share that with my students. I'll give you some examples. We um, have accounts receivables issues. Look, we're charging our client. Generally, we operate in a flat fee based model. Not every client gets uh, charge the flat fee. We have some contingent. We have um, some hourly, the more traditional uh, billing mode. Um, but I like to do flat fee, and I like to do it because I'm in a competitive field. Um, it works. Sometimes it doesn't. It, there's all kinds of issues regarding scope of services and, and, and how you can be an efficient law firm and make money in that kind of a uh, model. Um, and then we have clients, as I'm sure every private lawyer, lawyer law firm does, that doesn't pay. They're on an installment agreement, you don't get it all up front, and um, the payments stop coming in. And then we have the ethical obligations of continuing our representation versus the economic realities of we have other clients that are paying us and we have to devote our attention in those areas. So these are the um, uh, issues that uh, come up every day that I didn't see when I was in the not-for-profit funded, no fee paying law um, clinic or law practice. Um, I like it. I like sharing this with my students. And to me, it's the real world and extraordinarily rewarding when we work through these issues together. Can I add a couple, and don't mean to steal, steal your thunder, but like you just made me think of a couple of other things, Jonathan. So like the first thing that I, I want to point out is a lot of my students have ended up at some point considering or going out either on their own or in small practices. And I think being in my clinic have, has, and, you know, some of them are in large law firms and some are in medium law firms, but that's empowered them to do that, to sort of see this, which I thought was really, um, it's an interesting and it's a good aspect of it. The other one that is so essential, and I, I think I alluded to it, but, but just to be explicit, is that I don't have limited engagements. Do you know what I'm saying? Most other legal clinics, you're going to come in and you're going to have a very limited engagement, which by definition means, here, write me a founder's agreement. No offense, I can write you a founder's agreement, but there are so many more interesting things. What's on my desk this week is trying to manage GDPR for a multi-million dollar business, and that's a privacy law that's rolling out in Europe. And it's awesome, and I'm learning all sorts of new things, and so are my students, because we follow our clients. We don't have, it's just like an actual practice. You don't have that moment where you say, I'm going to take this one discrete practice thing that I know a ton about, and I'm just going to do it over and over and over again. Instead, my, my students get to see the life cycle of all different things. I have clients for which I've been their counsel for the, from the very beginning, and they're, they're rolling out into selling now. And so that gives us the opportunity to have very sophisticated transactions that you get an exposure to really early on in an educational environment that no one else does. So if you think about it, if you're doing a Series A financing, that's not your first interaction with a lawyer, you know? So you're not going to come to a legal clinic, like even around the country, and now say, oh, well, I need a Series A. I'm going to go to this random legal clinic for that limited engagement. Whereas if you're with me and I've been kind of like showing you that I'm an awesome lawyer for this last few years, I'm going to stick with you, and now I have this transaction along with all the other ones. So I think it's a really fun experience, and you get a, a richer experience. For the students, can you talk a little bit about how many hours you have devoted to the clinic and kind of what that experience was like? Sure. Um, right now I'm doing, it's three credit hours, so it's 12 hours a week, um, and I can do it from anywhere. I can come into the clinic and work, or I can attend depositions, go to court hearings. I can do it from home if it's just what I'm doing now, it's just um, discovery answers. And yeah, it's 12 hours a week, which I also work, so it's a good balance. I kind of spend some time doing that. I spend time in school. I have time for clinic. Um, and your personal life. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> <I know that. laughs> So when I was working, I work. Uh, I took the clinic for four credits, which makes I work 16 hours every week. And depending on the workload, sometimes I work more than 16 hours or less than that. And the good thing about the clinic at school is it's actually in the building of the school. So you can just go to classes and then go back to the clinic office and work there. Or even sometimes you can work from home. So that's make the life much easier. You don't need to go to the law firm because the office is six, 10 hours commuting. You can just work. 
I wouldn't want to speak um, on behalf of the other political professors who aren't here, but I think um, the, the um, nature of the work will dictate where and when you can do that work. We all run independent practices within the um, law offices, within the CK Law Group. And um, what that you know, really means is that if you're in litigation, uh, you may have a very busy weekend before the trial. On the other hand, if you're doing transactional work, you may have a little bit more of control over when and where. But I know you have deadlines, too, because I see you running around all the yeah, time. Right? So, so it really just, you know, it depends. It depends on the practice. It depends on what the workload is at any given point in time. Yeah, but to, to Jude's point, which I think is a good one, and, and to, to begin piggyback off of that, we're professors. So that's fundamentally different, right? You're going to get that, at least in my, my clinic, you're going to get that feeling of being in a, frankly, well, I've been trained in a large law firm, so a large law firm. And, but you're not, meaning when you screw up, you're going to have a conversation with me, but it's also going to be like, a, don't do that again. It's all okay. We're good. We're cool. And, uh, and so I think there's a real opportunity there to learn. Also, I, I do think that the being in the same building is really amazing because for my clinic, the more you're around, the more you get to do. So I encourage my students to, for, from a camaraderie standpoint, from just like a sheer, I mean, our floor is fun. My office <laughs> is fun. I like you to be around. I like you to stop by. I like you to like, I have a, you know, I, I, there were there are tons of chairs and couches and apples in my office. And I expect people to come by and have a snack and do some work because you're here a lot. So, so that when you're around, like the saying, I have to go to class right now, not only is that acceptable, it's like, go to class right now. You know what I'm saying? And we try to figure out how that works. And there's enough volume of things that you're never, you know, missing stuff. So immediately prior to meeting with June for lunch, I <laughs> met with a student for like, I don't know, 15 minutes about something. Her partner couldn't come because she was doing something else. No big deal, right? We know that. So it works really well. So now I'd like to open it up uh, for your questions. You can use the questions box in the webinar software uh, to type in your questions and um, we will have the panelists answer those for you. So it looks like we've got our first question that's come in. Um, can you elaborate on the 1L rotation program? And I'm not clear on how that's different from being in a clinic as a 2L or 3L. It's a great question. Want me to take that yes. first? All right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, um, different programs. Yeah, the one L rotation I think was originally modeled after like the medical school shadowing um, either practicing um, uh, physicians or um, I guess upper level um, medical students. And so the idea is that it is primarily observation sitting in on um, meetings with uh, the regular clinical students, seeing how we're strategizing and preparing cases. The rotation itself, um, I think they do, uh, the students do three rotations with three different clinical um, professors. I think so each one is four weeks, so that's the 12 week semester. There is a weekly plenary session where all the 1L rotation students from all the clinics um, have a topic with one of the professors that, uh, or an outside speaker that uh, presents a topic, whether it be um, how to um, do intakes, potential client interviews, how to argue before the judge, and the litigation case, or different topics that uh, rotate week to week. Um, what else can I say about the other program? Sometimes we, we, we take advantage and, and get some free labor from the, the one else as well, but I probably shouldn't put that on camera. But that's true, you know, they like to do it and we enjoy having them help us. So, so I run the 1L program in a, in a mildly um, different way, only because any clinic student who's been in my clinic can tell you the first, I would say, three weeks of onboarding is a lot. It's just like meeting with me a lot and giving a lot of meetings and trying to figure out how to use it, right? So if you have four weeks, it's almost impossible to onboard you onto actual clients. And as a first year, you have a very rigid schedule other than this. I really want you, as first years, to like do well there. So what I try to do is meet meet one else where they're at and try to focus on giving a spat, just a quick glimpse into what it looks like to do this practice. So we do a drafting exercise where, and I think this I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on this. Like one else get to actually mark up a document and negotiate within a written form, and we talk about that. We do an IP um, sort of unit we go visit an ip lawyer at some point or some sort of a co-working space so it's it's very different than the actual clinic in that you're not working on live client stuff you're working with and around live client stuff 
on a, on a, on a peak of what a practice area is like. So if you take it as a 1L, a lot of the times that what that will do is will help form the rest of your of your um, of your law school career. So you might come into this and say, ooh, I really want to be a litigator. Good to know, right? Now I'm going to maybe look at some of the litigation um, certificate programs or the clinical opportunities there. Otherwise, also people might not realize, hey, actually I thought I wanted to do boom, 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 but intellectual property is kind of interesting. So the one program focus is really to tell or to expose younger, maybe unsure students, not younger in age, but like new students, um, to a variety of different practices in areas of law as opposed to just theoretical like I like property So I maybe want to be a real estate lawyer. It's not really related to that super well <laughs> And then from that allow and empower them to kind of figure out the best path through the law school Whereas the clinic clinic is very much hands-on in, in things and you're you're really doing the heavy lifting which is why you have to kind of had your first year done, although you can start it in the summer after your first year. So that's one thing. You're technically a 2 well at that point, which I'm not sure if the rest of the crew knows. So a lot of people will actually spend their first year summer there, and that can be a really fun opportunity, especially since the first year summer, is, it can sometimes, in law school, be hard to find a really rich opportunity wherever you go. Um, yeah. yeah, that's my thought. So our next question is, if I'm going to participate in a clinic that will involve work requiring a 7-Eleven license, when should I get one? And it might also be helpful to say what a 7-Eleven license is for those who don't oh, know. Oh, you and never go to court. <laughs> well, I go to court all the time, but we go into federal court and we don't really use the 7-Eleven. The IRS has a special recognition of students um, and then the tax court does it by agreement. Yeah, so I also don't really have 7-Eleven, although occasionally we're in state court. Um, I know there's some very specific requirements about it. I know you don't have to worry about it first year because there's a minimum hourly, um, an hour requirement. Oh, you guys know? Wait, they know. Wait, okay. Please, somebody bail me out. I actually, I just got mine in the mail the other day. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, the requirement is that you have to have completed at least half of the required hours to graduate to apply. So it's usually two L's would be able to do it, um, probably their second semester and then on a three L. So. I've done that. And then, yeah, you apply. There's an application. You, I would say if you're going to need it, I don't think any clinic requires it. I think you can get it if you want to. That's how my clinic was. Um, and then once you apply, it takes, I think it took three weeks for me to get mine. So if you want to get one, it would allow like a month. And to be clear, what the 7-Eleven license allows you to do as a law student under the supervision, it allows you to go to court and appear on behalf of clients. So. For instance, I'm, I think it was Kling, was, like, yeah. Professor Kling, who does a criminal defense um, clinic, actually had one of his students last year, I have a question of time, arguing for the Seventh Circuit, yeah. which she did just, that was awesome. She was a 7-Eleven. So um, I know that Rhonda DeFridis, um, with the, in the family law clinic, oftentimes has her students appear in court. So if you want that kind of trial experience, the 7-Eleven is a really good opportunity to do that. And then you can also use it sometimes in not-for-profit work in the summers. Great. So next question is, rather than getting credit for clinics, can you get paid? Go ahead and answer have, that. I have a really good answer. I'm sorry. I, I, by the way, John, we talked one. about this before. We're like, we can each independently talk like a lot. <laughs> we could go for two hours each. We're being very polite. Right? He's a radio guy. Mm -hmm. He's got like a really nice voice. So <laughs> the reason I'm saying this is, is because I've actually had both experiences. No. The clinical program, you are technically like a federal intern, meaning it's an academic program. It's very different than getting paid. We're here to make sure you're having an educational experience. We're not here to make sure that you're leveraging money. I can also tell you, like, from my client's point of view, I don't charge for student work. I, um, it, I add on to it. Sometimes it's a little bit slower. Um, it supplements. We'll, we'll iterate in, in, individually, but, like, the hours that they put in don't technically bill. Now, that's important because... Sometimes students become like odd, not like spectacularly valuable. So my most recent hire is Kathleen Larson. She graduated this last May. She started with me as a clinic student for her second year. Was she in your clinic the first time? Uh, I think she was a year later. Okay, I have no such a time. So she started as a second year. She did the first clinic, and then she did the second clinic, and she was just just killing it. And then in the summer after her second year, she did an independent study to stay on. It was after that summer that I was like, "Not a, she's a, we need to pay her. 
because she's helpful. And so at that point, I hired her as the law clerk in my clinic um, in the third year. So she got no credit for that in the third year. And, and that was something else. Now, that's not a common path, but I want to point it out because you are here to learn, and that's how we look at it. And you're going to have all sorts of awesome opportunities. Um, and that's why it's different than going out to an outside source where they're like, oh, well, you're here. I want you to do a ton of legal research. Just get at it. You know, I, I want to make sure you have resume bullets. Like when you're done, I want to look at your resume both on one. I want to see that you can put substantive work on there to go to your next opportunity. I, I wanted to add, uh, I agree with everything you said. Um, I also have a staff attorney, and um, I believe on the cusp of um, perhaps hiring a second staff attorney. We have the volume. That's all good news. Um, but we are here at Chicago Kent in the clinical program um, because we're teachers. Now, we wouldn't be here if we weren't experienced practitioners, but we're here primarily uh, and we would not keep our jobs if we were a teaching and if that wasn't um, a um, foundational uh, objective of what we do. And I think that uh, I'm often asked, you know, what do, what do I do for a living? You know, you go out and you talk to neighbors and friends and stuff. So, well, yeah, I'm a teacher, um, but I'm a lawyer also. I really do both. And that kind of makes us unique um, in, this, in this country, really. Uh, but I always think of myself as um, an educator, and every uh, we had a huge problem. I know we we don't have a lot of time, but we had a problem to, uh, today in, 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 with a filing that we did yesterday. Me and the two students, and you know, it's, it's my fault. Of course, it's my fault. Everything's my fault. But we turned it into a learning experience, like every mistake is. When we do it right, we don't have quite as much to talk about. <laughs> we have more to talk about when things get messed up. How we own that, and then how we correct it. And um, that's my job, and I love doing it. And I don't think Professor Harper, I, I, I can speak for her because she's here, and correct me if I'm wrong, I won't speak for the others, but we're here because we love to teach and because we see that as our mission. For sure, I mean, it's a lot of fun, for sure, for sure. Okay, so our next question, uh, which you may or may not know, does the IP I, clinic include copyright and trademark areas or is it only focused on patent law? So we have two clinics that cover those. We actually. Siren, we have, I don't even hear that on the webinar. I love Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. Um, do not walk in the intersection when you hear that. Okay, it's impolite. Someone's in there. Meaning it's possible. So we have the patent clinic, and the patent clinic is relatively specific. It, I think it's technically called the IP clinic, but it's very patent heavy. It's run by I think now three attorneys at KNL Gates. If you're interested in patent work, oh man, you should totally do it because the only reason these guys do it is to try to hire and recruit from our students. So, I mean, hustle and get to that client, right? Now, if you're not interested in patent work, but you're interested in copyright and trademark, I do a lot of that. By a lot of that, I mean every single student of mine has had probably at least one trademark search and filing and maybe, maybe up to two. And in addition to that, we're also doing things like we had a question on um, a trademark clearance for one of our larger clients where they already printed the stuff and we're like, oh, that's not a good one. Um, copyright, for sure. I filed a copyright. Filing copyright is a little less relevant or it's a little less common in my practice, but the copyright, um, mostly it's uh, expressed through employment related things and ensuring that the company owns all of the copyrights. It's particularly relevant actually now in influencer agreements and social media and things like that. So if you're interested in copyright and uh, trademark, that's me mostly. And if you're interested in patent, the IP clinic. So we've got just about a minute left. Any final thoughts for the attendees on the webinar um, that you'd like to share about the clinic? Oh, you too. You guys first. Um, I think I was um, just to um, second professors um, mentioned like it's really a educational purposes clinic it's like experience for students to learn that's something you may not get at other um, jobs you will be working at law firms or companies because they professors here are, are here to teach us and if you don't understand you can ask them and they will explain to you and then you can even take their classes like i did with professor harper i took her uh, entrepreneurship um, law after i took the clinic because i was so into it and um <laughs> that's my yeah, I mean, I'd agree. It's great to get experience, but it's also great to learn to get that experience because you're not just kind of thrown at an assignment at you and not told really how to do it. You get kind of walked through it first and then you get to do it yourself, which is really nice. It's a good experience. Yeah. 
I would just add that if you are interested in the clinical programs here, if you want to learn more, um, we're all accessible. Uh, we're busy practicing attorneys, sure, but please send us an email. We can correspond through email if you're in the area. Stop by, make an appointment, and we'll sit down with you. Uh, and I know that my colleagues here, I will speak for them, I know that they would offer you the same opportunities. Come on in, talk to us, and um, you know, have your questions answered. We'd love to do that, actually. Yeah, and the one, um, since I have to talk, <laughs> uh, I love hearing about where my students go and where they've been. And the one thing I remember about law school that was so fun, I don't know if it's the same at every law school, but I know it's here, is that people know you. And I think especially when it comes to the clinic, like I know and think about all of these students, not just today, but like as they grow, as they grow up and move in their career. And it's just a nice starting point for anyone that's interested in this area. Um, so I, we like students, <laughs> you should like us. <laughs> Great, well thank you. So we've reached the end of the time for the webinar. We appreciate you joining us for today's presentation. If you have any remaining questions, please feel free to contact the Office of Admissions. You can reach us at admissions at kentlaw, K-E-N-T-L-A-W dot I-I-T dot E-D-U. And we look forward to speaking with you further about the clinical program in the future. Thanks.